Hey everybody, it's Katie from Bobby Hair Studio. Thank you for coming back. Today I'm going to be going over my basic bleach root application and I'm actually going to put on a fun new color on my client Riley who's never done this before. We're going to do like a bubblegum pink color but the fun thing about it is we're going to change up how the color is so we're not doing straight out of the bottle pink. We're kind of customizing it to what would be best for her which is a little bit more of a muted bubblegum pink not super like right in your face pink. So you're gonna see how I mute my pinks and change out my colors from Pulp Riot. So Riley's formulation, we always start with a Blonde Me and Seven volume because she's naturally very light and we don't need to have high power volume for her hair. My newest method to do bleach roots is to move from one quadrant to the other when I start from the back so I don't do one entire side and then do the other entire side. In case I need to wash it out, I can wash out sections evenly and make sure that she has a good lift and that I don't have to rinse out the left side versus the right side. I just start rinsing out the entire back all at once. I always make sure to take thin sections and I like to paint from underneath and on top as well. This ensures that she will get an even saturation all over her hair and that we won't have any missed spots or any areas that don't lift well enough because they dried out too fast. I try to get as close to the demarcation line as I can without actually going over because Blonde Me tends to swell a little bit. But I find that if you mix the consistency a little on the drier side, the bleach doesn't swell quite as much as if you were to mix it with more developer than with more of the powder, if that makes any sense. Like I was talking about earlier, now I'm starting on the other side. Now that I've done a small quadrant on the right side of the back, I'm gonna go do the left side. And this is just how I do my building blocks. I go, you know, from the bottom right to left, and then middle left to right, and then top right to left. And then I like to connect the center. And you'll see how I connect it later. And that just ensures that I don't have areas that are too tiny for me to work on that can cause high overlapping and high risk of breakage. One of the most important things that you can remember when you're doing your bleach roots is to always, always refresh your bowls after 10 to 15 minutes. You don't want that bleach to lose its power because as it's sitting in the bowl, it's still using up some of its power. It's not gonna be full power once you put it on the root. From the time that you mix it, it starts developing. So you wanna make sure that you're always using fresh lightener on your client's hair so that they get the best and most powerful lift possible. So now that you've seen enough of the back, I'm just gonna skip to the part where you see how I connect the back pieces to do the crown of the head because you guys know what I'm doing in the back here. Oftentimes when you separate the back into two pieces going up towards the top, there can be this kind of pie-shaped triangle piece that goes at the very top of the crown that's really tiny and you can get breakage with it. So I tend to like to Combine my pieces together and put a foil between the center so that I don't get any overlapping in these long blonde pieces. And it actually does protect the parting that I made earlier and make sure that it still lifts really beautifully. 
And this is just how I like to do the top and the back. It makes sure that I don't have any breakage and from time to time I like to lay a foil down in between so I don't get any overlapping or too much swelling between the layers of the root touch up. I'm also pulling everything back towards the back of her head which creates a lot of good insulation because everything is laying on top of each other. So keep in mind when you put in your last piece though that you should have very fresh bleach to put in your last few sections from this top piece here so that it lifts with its full power because it is going to be exposed to the open air so it's going to dry out a little bit faster unless you do cover it with some foil. Now I'm moving on to the sides and I like to section her hair horizontally so I can work through it very quickly. And I go right up to the parting and then I start on the next side. This is essentially the same type of parting and application that you're gonna see on the back. So this is just kind of here for anybody who likes to watch me apply bleach roots, but there's really honestly no difference in how I apply the front into how I apply the back. Once I've finished applying the lightener, I like to put on a piece of foil on the top so that it insulates and keeps it lifting evenly with everything else. Now it's time for the rinse out because she's lifted to a perfect level 10. I always like to rinse with cool water because the scalp is going to be quite tender and obviously because it had some chemicals just on it. So whenever you rinse out a bleach root, make sure to use cool or lukewarm water so that you don't make the scalp more irritated than it already is. My drain decided to stop working today, but what I like to do after I do any kind of bleach work is use a clarifying shampoo. Today I use the Sunday by Bumble and Bumble on the hair. And what that does is it helps to kind of pull out any old toner or any residue that's gonna prevent the toner that's gonna go on her hair next from doing its best work and making everything as even as possible. So I always clarify and then I do like to use a bit of a moisturizing shampoo or conditioner so that I can kind of seal the hair and make sure that everything accepts everything in a more even way so that the porosity is just better between the top and the ends. 
It's always good to double shampoo as well whenever you have a bleach root because there is a lot of product in the root area and one shampoo oftentimes doesn't get all of that product out. So it is good to be very thorough. After I clarified her hair, I used the Bumble and Bumble Hairdressers Invisible Oil Shampoo and Conditioner because it's quite moisturizing and the conditioner is going to help detangle her hair and even out her porosity. And I'm not going to pre-tone her today because I want the little bit of underlying yellow in her hair to help hold the pink into her hair. I don't want to make her a cool pink, I want to make her a warm pink. Today my color mixture is this kind of ratio here, I didn't really measure, but the pink is blush, the green is sea foam, and the yellow is lemon, and they're all from Pulp Riot. Then I added some conditioner to kind of lighten up the color because I didn't want it to be that vivid, and I mixed it until there was literally no difference between any of the colors. There's going to be no blotches and no chunks of color because that will deposit in her hair and you'll be able to see it. Then I applied the color all over to her root first and whenever you're working with direct dyes make sure to do thin sections and to give them a really really solid saturation because direct dyes like to just sit where they are and don't like to be moved around the hair. So make sure to have more dye than you think you need. A lot of you may be wondering why I added green and yellow to her pink formula. And it doesn't look like it makes a huge difference, but green actually mutes out pink because it is on the opposite end of the color wheel. So if you want something more blushy rather than bright, I would add a little bit of the opposite color, um, which is green. And I like to add in a really soft pastel green so it doesn't go too overboard. And then yellow for a little bit of that warmth back to the pink without making it too hot pink. Then I went through her ends where there was some old blonde toner and this is where I applied basically the same formula and I applied it everywhere. I try not to mush it around too much, I try to just comb it through and make sure everything is evenly saturated. Now this is the part where you're going to need to use a little bit more of the product or maybe even a slightly deeper color when you're working on top of old toners because there is a little bit of that beige that comes through versus the raw lift in the root is going to have a more vivid result in the color. So keep that in mind whenever you do uh, a blonde root touch up and you want to add a fun color to it, that anything with previous toner might take to it a slight bit differently. Here I am doing her rinse out and what I like to do for a lot of my fashion colors is I like to rinse them out and then I fill the sink back up with warm water and I apply a mixture of water and the color that I applied to their hair to the water in the sink and it kind of helps to absorb into any porous areas that are left, any areas that didn't soak up quite as much color and I do like to take some of the raw color, that blush pink color and kind of go and find any little areas that didn't accept it quite as much as everything else. These colors tend to be really picky on where they like to be applied at their full strength and where they like to be a little bit more translucent so just be very picky when you're doing colors like this.
after I rinsed her out, I decided to blow dry and straighten her hair as she always likes to have it straight and long. And you can see how beautiful her color ended up being. I'm gonna be honest, there is a slight difference in some of the variation of the color and that's just how it is when you're going from a raw lift in the root to some previously toned blonde. But I feel like I'm still really happy with how this color turned out because overall it's super pearlescent, it's very soft and it suits her very well. I also like to take whatever color is left and I put it in a baggie or in a bottle for the client to take home and they can use it to refresh their color at home. So keep that in mind if you're a new stylist and you're doing fashion colors, send them home with a little bit of that color themselves and some gloves. And here she is, here's the final result, that beautiful like pearlescent pink is what I like to call it. I hope you guys liked it and I hope you guys learned a little bit from this video. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys.